Jason Asano walked through the halls of the Cloud Palace belonging to Emir Bahadir, the powerful adventurer who had arrived in the city with such fanfare. The Cloud Palace was far from just white cloud stuff, with the walls, floors, and ceilings cast in sunset shades of blue, purple, orange, and gold. In some areas, the color was startlingly vibrant, in others, soft and subdued. Everything glowed with its own light. Emir had told Jason it was absorbed sunlight the palace could store up and distribute as needed. The floors underfoot had a springiness that was still stable, as if an overly sensible engineer had been forced to design a bouncy castle. The total effect was like walking through a fairy tale. A full wing of the Cloud Palace was dedicated to the guest suites, and Jason walked from his own to that in which Emir had placed Belinda and Sophie. The two thieves had been made pawns of local politics, and Jason had placed them under Emir's protection, which they had only accepted out of desperation. The door to their suite was white, with the edges marked out in blue. On the wall next to the door was a small circular patch of gold, which he pressed a finger into. It felt like pressing into a marshmallow. He heard a pleasant chime from the other side of the door, like tinkling water. A few moments later, the door became translucent, revealing Sophie standing on the other side. She wore dark, practical clothing, with her entire posture screaming the opposite of welcome. You'll want to come in then, she said, her tone trying to convince him otherwise. It's time we had a talk, Jason said. But we don't have to do it here. The palace is full of places for a nice chat. It'll be nice, will it? Probably not, now you ask. But I brought sandwiches, if that helps. Sophie jerked her head in a reluctant invitation, and Jason walked inside. His own suite was larger than any place Jason had ever lived, and Belinda and Sophie were occupying one that seemed similar. Terrace, she directed him, although did not head that way herself. He could see the terrace through the walls, which had their opacity shifted to the point of being invisible. The mist wall tussled Jason's hair as he walked through it. That's indoor-outdoor living, he murmured to himself as he walked over to the terrace furniture. He set out a tray of sandwiches, plates, glasses, and a pitcher of blended fruit drink from his inventory, plucking the items out of thin air before sitting down. Belinda and Sophie came out just as he was pouring drinks. Belinda was dressed in light summery clothes of loose shirt, pants, and sandals, in the colourful style common to Greenstone. She sat down and immediately grabbed a sandwich. Sophie didn't reach for the food, looking at it with suspicion. Is this bread from Pantero's? Belinda asked, after swallowing her first bite. Pantero's was a bakery in Old City, and had the best bread Jason had found in the city. It is, he said, brightly. My friend Beth told me about it. They've been operating there for an incredibly long time. Her grandmother used to go there as a girl when their family owned that whole part of the city. You're talking about the Cavendish family. That's them. Didn't they leave the Cavendish district the better part of two centuries ago? Something like that, Jason said. That's the adventuring life, I suppose. You live long enough to see history for yourself. The easy smile fell from his face. If it doesn't get you killed first, he added darkly, clearly talking to himself. Did something happen when you went away? Belinda asked. A friend of mine died, he said. A close friend? As close as I have in this world. She taught me so much about being an adventurer. She taught you to fight? Sophie asked. No, that was Rufus. He taught me to fight like an adventurer. Farrah taught me to live like one. He smiled sadly. She'd call me out when I started talking out of my backside, which you may come to find is pretty often. He brushed the back of his hand over his eyes and gave them a grin that was only a little forced. None of that matters to you, though, he told them. You have your own troubles to deal with, which is why I'm here. I thought your clever plan collapsed in a heap, Sophie said. It did, Jason said. But times, as the song goes, are a-changing. What song? Doesn't matter, Jason said, waving a dismissive hand. 